Hello and welcome back to Airtech Hunting. We've got the mighty FX Impact M3 today. The long range setup, we're gonna take some long range shots, but we have to be quick because I gotta hop on a plane to Germany this afternoon to go check out the FX standard EWA. So stay tuned for that as well. That's in the end of this video. So let's get going. With a big gun, we shoot big slacks. We're gonna do the 34 grain javelin today. There's gonna be a lot of wind today. They forecasted that, so we need heavy slacks. We need a good BC to bark the wind. So that's what we're gonna go with. So this is the gun we're gonna use today. It's the FX Impact M3. It's got a slack power kit. It's got an 800 millimeter uh, barrel with a carbon fiber stiffener. We've got the over barrel silencer from Hein Froman that makes the gun looks much shorter than it is because the, the barrel ends around there. And we've got the Element Optics Titan on top there that we're going to film through with the scope cam. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice setup. Uh, a lot of Sabre Tactical parts in here as well. The Sabre Tactical buttstock and the Sabre Tactical rail as well with the built-in level. Really nice setup, so yeah. So if you guys haven't seen the previous video where we set up the ballistic chronograph, this is the new Element Optic Helix 1500 rangefinder with built-in ballistic chip from Element Optics, a custom chip. So that is, that is what uh, we did in the previous video as well. We just uh, did the profile for the Wildcat on that day, uploaded to the rangefinder, and today we just did the same process, uploaded on here. We don't need turret tape or anything. This rangefinder will tell you your exact clicks that you need for each shot with angle, everything. Uh, um, calculated in there so yeah really nice setup no more turret tape so let's go okay so today is going to be a little bit different we have brought our table we're going to set up base right here because we've got some long range shots on the wires and in the trees and stuff over there so that's the plan uh, we want to really stretch the legs of the fx impact because that's what it's made for in this configuration um, this gun is too heavy to carry around, so we're going to do this. If for any reason we need to walk around a bit and shoot, we do have the Wildcat here as well, and you can quickly upload a new profile and, and, and carry on. But let's see what happens. Right, so we've got a few on the wire there already. Wind is from about 2 o'clock, but it's not very strong yet. They did predict it to get stronger. So let's see, let's go for that one. 149 is 5.4 MRAT. <laughs> it's a loud impact and he is dead awesome yeah 149 meters almost 150 and down he goes on the first shot you can easily track the slug traveling through the air on its way to the target it makes solid impact through the vital organs and the pigeon starts falling to the ground while trying to cling on to life it is a long way down but eventually makes contact with the ground he tries to get away with what is left, but you can actually see the puncture wound here made by the slug, and then he runs out of energy. 5.4.2 5.4, okay, let's see. <laughs> and he's down. Another one at 149 meters, and down he goes. So the wind died down there, so it just held almost dead on. I should have held a little more for wind as this slug traveled a little too far to the left and hit him on the wing. Luckily the slug ricocheted from the wing bone and straight back through his vitals. It was another long way down to the ground and it was all over by the time he got there. It's a nice overcast morning, we had a lot of rain yesterday. So it's uh, pretty cool temperatures as well, about 18 degrees Celsius. Much different <laughs> to what we had last time. Uh, last time it was 37 degrees Celsius, we almost died. And now it's perfect. So Maggie's got one at the back here on the roof, so we're going to change it around quickly. This is that one at 110 meters. <laughs> I was busy walking, so I pulled a bit. <laughs> Sorry about the noise, the tractor that delivered the feet. Uh, it's just over there and he's making quite a noise. But yeah, Maggie got him. 110 meters, that was 2.9 2.9 MRAT, as you can see there on the scope. 
uh, yeah, pretty awesome. The pigeon was busy walking, so Maggie had to time this one perfectly. She gets it spot on though and drops him on the spot. Maggie's getting ready to get one on the on the wire over there again. So, so I can remember it's about 150, is it? 149. 149, yeah. Got that one at 149 meters. Well done. <laughs> nice shot. This shot was an exact copy of my previous shot and Maggie also got lucky with a ricochet. She did not follow him down though but he did suffer the same fate. A few starlings landed to the left of us and I was not going to let that opportunity go by. 57 meters, that's 0 0.01 MRAT, basically on zero. I'm just gonna wing it like this. Oh. <laughs> and he's dead, 57 there meters. Flies the rest. Always fun to shoot them. The Starling won the unlucky lottery, but I wasn't done with them yet because the rest of the group landed on the roof close by and I was ready for them as well. 139, 4.78. Just look at all those bastards over there. <laughs> Okay, let's go for those there. <laughs> I got one shot. two down <laughs> with well one shot. So that was at 139 meters. Two starlings with one shot. That made my day. Awesome. By the smile on my face, you can see how much I absolutely hate these overpopulated invasive bastards. So getting two down with one shot was an absolute bonus. Just look at their sheer numbers. Absolutely disgusting. Right, so Maggie's getting ready for another long range shot here. Should be about 149 meters around there. What are you getting? 151. It 151. Be now that wires are running, uh, what do you call it in English, skew. So the more to the left you go, the shorter the distance, the more to the right, the longer the distance. For us it looks parallel, but it's not. Yay! Very delayed. <laughs> it's so far, so it's 150 meters. That was a nice solid impact, holy cow. Yet another copy of the previous shots, again in the wing. And again Maggie gets lucky by taking him down to the ground. It just shows you how difficult it is to get the wind call right in these conditions. The gun is very consistent though. One thirty two, four point three one. <laughs> Hundred and thirty two meters and down. Awesome. This was by far my favorite shot for the day, right through the spine and he drops down like a sack of potatoes. So satisfying. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm going to make my flight to Germany, to Iwa, to go check out what's going on there. So yeah, let's uh, hop on the plane. Okay, so I'm at the airport now and gonna board a flight now, 12 hour flight to Frankfurt and then Nuremberg and then we're at Iwa, so I'm not gonna bore you with that, so I'm just gonna bump my way over there. Cheers. And just like that, we are here in Germany at Iwa. Just arrived here this morning. Uh, pretty quick for you guys, but a pretty long trip for me. So let's get inside and see what's going on. The Iwa Outdoor Classics is an internationally renowned trade fair held annually in Nuremberg. This event serves as a global platform for the outdoor hunting and shooting sports industry to showcase their latest innovations, products and technologies. With a rich history dating back to the 1970s, the Iwa Outdoor Classics attracts exhibitors and visitors from around the world offering unparalleled networking opportunities and insights into the cutting-edge developments within the sector. From firearms and ammunition to outdoor apparel and accessories, the event caters for professionals, enthusiasts and stakeholders alike. 
With its comprehensive exhibition and vibrant atmosphere, Iwa Outdoor Classics continue to be a cornerstone event for industry professionals and enthusiasts passionate about outdoor pursuits. That is why FX Air Guns and Element Optics continue to be present at this prestigious event to showcase their latest technology and products. So let's have a look at some of them. Hello, I'm here with the FX DRS. This is our newly launched air rifle that we have designed to be a great hunter, a great competition rifle and an overall lightweight East carry around uh, hunting rifle that should be one of our most straightforward air rifles but also one of our most adaptable air rifles in the same gun. We have it available in a nice Minelli walnut, we have it available in a plastic synthetic stock but also a competition MDT stock for whatever you want to use it for. And it's a very simple uh, standard design but the different options we have available gives us the flexibility to custom make this for the purpose that end user want to use it for. So the standard hunting version comes with a cocking lever, a rotary magazine that's easy to operate, easy to use. It comes with an adjustable trigger which has a really nice match grade feel to it. It has an optional uh, plenum. Uh, we're able to use either a smaller plenum or a bigger plenum depending on what the use is for standard uh, operations uh, it will come with a smaller planum where it will be tuned to shooting a nice 900 feet per second with 15.8 grains JSPs it, it leaves you with a very very lightweight very very compact hunting rifle it will give you up to 60 shots per fill uh, in 2.2 uh, high power uh, but that's uh, also available with an upgradable carbon fiber tube the carbon fiber tube will give you approximately 30% more shots per fill, so up to 80 shots per fill in a 2-2 small package like this. And we also have the Halo slugs available. Uh, this production has started currently on the 7.62. Uh, we're moving up to 9mm and 2.2 shortly, and we'll also have 6.35 and 177 available in the future. The Halo is designed to be a very, very good option towards pallets. We have, we have them being run in a fully automated process which will be able to give us a very very high quality ammunition at a very very affordable price for the end user. Uh, they are designed to be a substitute for pallets so we are doing a very very similar weight towards what the standard pallets we tune the air rifles with are. And due to the fact that we designed them this way they are very easy to get up set up with your rifle compared to other slugs. They're very, very forgiving uh, and very, very, very accurate. Hey guys, Matt here with Element Optics. Uh, we've got our Hyper 7 on display and we've got the rangefinder module in its final form on display this year at Ewa, which is awesome because these two things work really well together. Uh, I'll run through the Hyper 7 briefly for those who don't know what it's all about and then we'll talk about the module also. Uh, but in a nutshell, the Hyper 7 is an optical scope with a digital display. Um, which really kind of solves a lot of problems with uh, optical systems that are either entirely mechanical or entirely digital. Um, mechanical analog scopes have been around forever and they, they work well, but you kind of stuck with what you buy. If you have a, a, a rifle scope with a mill reticle in first, uh, uh, in, you know, with complicated reticle, you kind of stuck with that. This allows you to choose your units, choose your reticle, and have your firing solution calculated instantly and displayed within your screen so you can see where to shoot, which is a total game changer. Um, you know, some purely digital scopes do that also, but those also have other problems. For one, if you're looking through a viewfinder instead of through glass, uh, there's always gonna be pixelation. There's always gonna be uh, uh, a, some, a slight lag between what the sensor is seeing and what the screen is seeing and it's going to chew through battery. This one, you're looking through glass at a full resolution image, so you don't have that problem. And you also don't have that battery drain because the battery is literally just powering the tiny little chip that does the ballistics calculations and the little display. So this battery will last you like months and months and months, um, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, Hyper 7, you can input your distance and angle and everything manually. Um, but the, the range finding module takes it to a different level in that if you come around this side, 
you'll see we've got a little pressure switch here you can put this on the front of the stock or over here we just have it here by your by your finger and when you press that button it will range up here and it will give you your firing solution uh, and will also send that range through to the Hyper 7 which will calculate the, the same firing solution and it will include measurements of humidity, temperature and pressure from its inbuilt sensors. So yeah, essentially it's an all-in-one solution. You literally, once you load it up, you point, you press the range finder and wherever the dot goes, you shoot. So very, very cool technology. We've also got a number of handheld range finders. So you've just seen the, the module that's on the Hyper 7. Um, but if you don't want to use a module, if you prefer to do stuff handheld, we've got a couple of options here. Uh, all of these have the same uh, element ballistics chip inside, so it works with the same uh, algorithms and uh, software that's on the element ballistics app. Um, but with the rangefinders, we've got a Helix 1500, which is the sort of 1,500 meter compact little hunting model that you've seen on Rules Channel before. And then we've got the Titan 3K, which is more for like long range and extreme long range shooting. This will range out to 3,000 meters and beyond. The big difference really is, number one, the, the distance you can range. You can see the Titan 3K just has a, a bigger laser lens, which focuses the laser, be uh, the, yeah, the, the laser beam a bit tighter, and then a bigger receiver and optical lens as well. And then it's got a bigger battery. It's got an 18650 battery with USB-C charging. And then lastly, we've got a, a tripod mount of here. So if you want to, let's say, put on a tripod and range a tiny gong at long range, this is going to be the one to do that. But for general use, hunting, uh, carrying around and shooting stuff, the Helix 1500 will do the job. And we've got transparent, uh, dual color transparent OLED displays in both of these, which are just such a step ahead of the, the normal sort of LCD or uh, reflective uh, OLED displays that are in, in many other rangefinders. And for the price, it's very, very hard to find those features in, in something this advanced. So we're very excited about these two. And then we've got uh, our new binoculars. Once again, we've been working on these for a while and we're very excited about the way they turned out. These are the Helix HDs. Uh, they are pretty compact, 8x42 and 10x42 binos with ED lenses. Um, nice sort of dark green color for, for hunting. And uh, we are actually including a chest bag with us, which once again, for the price, there's no one out there including a high quality chest bag like this that, that we know of so we're very happy with this um, magnetic cover on top here there's places to put range cards uh, there's a waterproof cover you can pull out the back and pull over if you want we've got molly on the side and the bottom for mounting the range find on the side if you want to and a little pocket here for a kestrel or for a spare battery or or whatever um, so yeah very cool and if you're a hunter and you just want to be able to spot stuff a bit better, little Helix HDs, uh, nice and affordable, uh, very high quality, good value for money, and these will be in stores quite soon. Of course, FX and Element had a lot of other familiar products on display that you have seen on this channel before. But for now, that is all and it was time to head home. Well, that is it, guys. That's the end of the show. It's now Sunday afternoon. Uh, just packed up the whole stand. And I'm on my way back now to the hotel and tomorrow I fly back. So I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Remember to subscribe, like the video and then I'll see you again next time. Cheers!